Hello, this is Josh Scoggin with The Chariot at the Vans Warp Tour 2013, and you're watching Next Mosh. Warp Tour is amazing. Um, it's kind of long days uh, because you have to wake up and figure out if you're playing at like 11:15 or if you're playing at like 8:20 uh, but p.m. But uh, but it's great. It's a, we have a lot of friends on this tour, and so um, so yeah, every night's like a big hangout, and uh, I like tours like that. We do have a bus. Um, sounds nice, and it is nice, but we are, we're sharing it with uh, O Sleeper, our good friends at O Sleeper, and uh, so yeah, 12 uh, smelly uh, dudes uh, in, a, in a bus can get sometimes a little nuisance, uh, kind of be a nuisance, but, um, but yeah, it's still a perk of having a bus for sure. Um, well, track number one, I think it's called Forget. We, uh, <clears throat> it's a fun one to play, but it's very, um, it's very word heavy. A lot, a lot of words, I gotta say. Um, and in the past, we've done it very late in the set, and it's just about killed me. And on the, on the Warp Tour, we actually do it, like, second. So, uh, now it's, it's, it's become my favorite song to play live, or one of my favorite songs to play live, and, uh, and I think it's because of that, because I'm not like dying trying to say all those words. Um, well, the, the newer tracks, there's a freshness that sort of comes with them. And uh, I enjoy that, I think we all enjoy that. Um, some of the older tracks are just muscle memory at this point, you know, like I couldn't quote any lyrics right now, but mid set, I, I can't forget them, you know. And, uh, and so I like we we all kind of like to, to stay on our toes and not I, I don't like when things become too muscle memory because I, I don't want it to be just cookie cutter uh, day after day. So every every show every, every tour we try to change it up and um, we we usually don't have set lists or anything. We usually just kind of wing it every night. To, on on Warp Tour though we've had we've had uh, we've had we have actually have a set list which is the first time we've done that in a couple years. But um. But yeah, so it's it's nice to just keep kind of keep changing things up and and bringing back some like old songs that we don't play a lot. Um, just anything to keep us on our toes, keep everything fresh, not let it get stale, you know. Um, we're always writing. Uh, just if something pops in our heads, we write it down. But um. With Warp Tour, like as I was saying before, it's kind of long, long days. Um, some are very, very hot days. Uh, so we haven't actually like really written anything or anything, uh, or, or even really talked about new stuff on this tour. But whenever we're home, whenever there's even like a week off, I mean, someone always shows someone else something or like, oh, I wrote this, and, and we just you know accidentally write a song or whatever. But um, but yeah, on Warp Tour, we've just kind of been hanging out a lot and just sort of uh, taking her easy. Um, Atlanta's a very good music uh, city. Um, we have a lot of variety, obviously a lot of rap, a lot of hip hop comes from there, um, but a lot of good like heavier bands too. And uh, so it's very easy to sort of nurture that kind of uh, uh, that mentality, you know. And uh, a lot, a lot of people, uh, you know, from around there that are able to, I guess, see you or whatever the case may be. And so for us, I mean, you know, we just. It was writing music and, and, and going to shows. I mean, there's always a show going on, whether it's some local, like, punk rock show or, like, some, you know, big... I mean, I saw all the, all my early shows I saw in Atlanta, uh, Smashing Pumpkins and, and uh, uh, back in, like, Melancholy, Infinite Sadness tour and, like, Rage Against the Machine, Evil Empire tour, stuff like that, you know, and so that definitely shaped who I am today and who I've become, so... Um, I think Atlanta is a great city anyway, but um, musically speaking, it's definitely very, uh, I think it helps a lot, you know, just to, to be exposed to all those different facets, you know. Um, 
Well, it wasn't on purpose by any means, but I definitely think, it, it, looking back on it, it's definitely, again, sort of helped us stay fresh and stay new. Um, right when you learn someone's sort of strengths or weaknesses, you know, um, if they leave, then it's it's on to, to you know, a new person, and, and you got to figure out their strengths and weaknesses and sort of re- invigorate your own strengths or weaknesses and so I think when it comes to writing music it, it you know it, it be it good or bad I think it comes with a freshness you know and, and again not being complacent and not just writing the same record over and over I think that helps and uh, I, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody uh, changing any members is like one of the hardest things ever it, 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 it just to relearn everything and just sort of re you know just kind of you know cooks in the kitchen sort of trying to get every everybody feel but thankfully we've always had friends replace friends you know and it's never been you know we've never ha held auditions or anything like that it's always just sort of fell into our laps and it's always been like oh you, you've been on tour with us doing lights anyway why don't you just fill in this role or whatever so so that's been really nice and very convenient in, a, in an otherwise difficult uh, uh, challenge you know what I mean so Um, it's a difficult question. When when we started, I mean, I didn't know anything about the business world of of music, you know. And uh, I think when we started, not knowing that, I, I'll take that as an advantage because um, you're just writing music you love. And uh, and then there's a, there's a phase that comes where you start learning all the business stuff and it can make you real jaded make you real sort of bitter about how things work in this in the music industry and and uh and and it can actually change how you write and change how you do things but then you get to, you can get to a point where you go okay well that's necessary but yet that's not going to change how i write and that's not going to change what music i think's good you know and uh so i feel like right now you know, I, I feel like knowledge is power, you know what I mean? And, and even though ignorance is bliss, I still feel like I would rather have the power than that bliss, you know? And and uh, I think now we have a, a good head on our shoulders and there's a way to maneuver your way through the big corporations that make up the uh, the labels and the and the, the, the best buys and et cetera, et cetera. There's a way to maneuver through all that without, without getting sucked under and without getting really fully taken advantage of, you know? Um, and uh, right now, I'm I'm able to say that on on uh, Good Fight slash E1 and, and have a very good relationship with those labels and, and a very fair um, thing that we've worked together with, you know. And and uh, and back in the day, you know, again, it's uh, I'll, I'll take power over bliss any day, you know. So. Uh, our guitarist peed the bed last night. I, I guess that's weird. He he had a dream that he was a little baby, and um, and uh, and he had but he had facial hair and and but he was a baby and um and he and he in the dream I guess he he peed all over himself and uh, and then when he woke up he had actually peed all over himself and so he uh, we have a we have a. We have a thing called the the bag the bag of truth, and so if you, if someone puts the bag of truth over your head, you have to tell. And we could tell something was up, and so we put the bag of truth over his head today, and he had to confess that he had he had peed the bed. Um, so, um, and his name's Brandon Henderson, um, and he and he wet the bed today. So that that was just today, actually, or last night, I guess. You know, during the night, sometimes. So thankfully, he's on the bottom. The bunks are like layered, so like he's on the bottom. So doesn't really affect anyone other than just, you know, if you, if you see him around or whatever, be like, hey, you peed the bed, and he'll be like, yeah, I totally did. I had a dream I was a baby. Hey!